what I'm going to do now is I'm working some on the bow. I'm doing a little bit of gnawing. Like I told you, I don't want to go in here on this head that's already, you know, 190 and take too much out. But at the same time, this uh, guide situation, it's pretty rough. So as you can see, the shape that I got, I did bullet nose it, but I didn't go back in the back and uh, remove too much raw material like I do maybe on the 210s when I'm trying to make a 230 stage 5 deal. It's got about, I don't know, a 15 degree slant all the way around. And compared to this, what we're talking about on the flow numbers, once it gets above, say, 300 lift, by changing to this from this, once it gets around four or five, especially between five and six, this right here could make as much as 10 CFM difference getting this shape right here connects as it starts to make its transition and turn around and come out into the bore. So uh, the entire process is done with this, and I'm going to tell you why. By staying away from the sides, kind of like playing that game operation and working here, this is going to give me the shape, the egg, because I can't go in here digging or I'm going to sure enough get in trouble because remember what the sonic checker told us. So playing like that game operation, I'm just going to form this shape right here, come around and then pull it up to the top and bullet nose the guide. That way I don't dig too much at the bottom, take too much material out to increase CC volume, and yet gain the high lift flow numbers at the top. Okay, so let's start right there and let's finish it up. You can see, wow, what a difference that makes on it. Uh, you can just see, once again, remember me telling you, light reflection. That right there is a good indicator, and as you can see, of course, there is some casting dark compared to shiny, but you can see literally how the reflection of the light is a little brighter on this side. It's darker here because the, from the way that the light is shining down, see our light bulb right there? I try to keep it as centered as I can. But looking at that right there, look at the reflection and how it goes in there. Like I said, light can be a big helper's tool because it's showing the area of uh, shade compared to here after it's done, after it's blended. So you, I guess you just can't see it through the camera. You'd have to be here beside of me to be able to witness it. But anyway, right there's what we're working on using the big egg, and I'm gonna go ahead and finish them. I try to get everything done with this big egg that I can, and then when I switch to the other one, I'm done with this turkey, my raw material remover. I'll go ahead and switch to the little bitty egg and do my final blending on it and finish it up. So right now we're on guide manipulation and transition of the roof, which is also this area here, the blend as it connects. See how thick the line is there? Now look over here on this side. Once I chop that down, I've closed the gap quite a bit. All right, that's all for now. It pointed this way at the bowls as I wanted to share something with you. On my LT1 videos, you remember I went in here and um, started cutting on the, the seed a little bit, blending it where it had the radius. I do this on a lot of them. I will not say I do it on all of them. It depends on how thick the seed is and what kind of head it is. Well, this is feared due to uh, results that I've heard. While I haven't ever had it happen to me, uh, there was a batch of these some years back that the seats would come uncompressed and fall out of the head. And I've heard this from more than one source, a lot of people uh, that have had this happen. I'm sure by now, these are a fairly new set, 2012, that they might have figured out this problem. But on this head, being a China head with some of the casting problems, this is not a head that you play that game with. So pretty much all I do is I blend it up right to the seat and I stop. I do not gnaw on that seat any because I would not want any of them falling out of the head and have that finger pointed at me saying I, I played with that. So on the Pro Comp heads is just right now until I can get some testing on it. 
I do not go in there and touch these seats. Not to mention, it is not a thick seat to begin with. If you look uh, right there, it's not a real deep seat. It's not a real thick one. So I just, for general purposes, all I do is I try to blend the aluminum up. I might take my uh, steel cutter and just lightly kiss on the edge where the aluminum meets it just so you don't feel a big difference because one of the problems also with this is you get these heads right from the factory and uh, it's got this crevice in it like a little ditch it's right up underneath the seat and you can feel it straighten that out but I do not go in here grinding at a 15 degree angle on the seat I just wanted to show you that stay away from that the only thing you might could do would be to take a steel cutter and just lightly kiss off right where it starts to blend and then leave it alone you're just going to have to deal with what pro comp gave you on this yeah, flow numbers are hurt. It's not the ideal situation, but until they give us a little more meat, what they're supposed to do, like Brodex and the rest of them, is they give us a little bit of overhanging aluminum right here so we can go in there and blend it to our specification or circumference diameters, whatever we're going to use. Pro Comp didn't do that. Okay, and I'll try to get you down in here a little bit closer so you can see it. All right, you see where the seat stops? Yet y'all are bolted on the car and go, wow, more horsepower. Because you went in here and ground a bunch out in other areas. And you think, well, I did it and it helps. But without a proper benchmark of knowing what you've done, it's hard to really tell. So just going in there and cut, there's a certain thing to be said about just going in here and cutting a bunch of meat out in the bowl area in general without any respect being paid to this transition. Would you pick up power cutting a lot of that out? Probably. How much power? And then, you know, the other question is when you do the valve job and stuff, how efficient is it? How much wet fuel is going into the cylinder bore? Whereas a bold job that a DIY guy might have come in here and got 20 horsepower out of it, if you do the bowls correctly with emphasis on transition across the seat and into the bore, that might be a 40 horsepower or 45 horsepower bow job instead of a 20 horsepower bow job. So guys, watch that seat area. Stay away from that and don't dig on that like I showed you on the LT1 because from what I hear, there's still somewhat of a problem on some of these. I don't know. I'll have to check into it. So just watch out. All right, that's all for now. i go ahead and show you real quick what I'm talking about. I'm concerned for you guys, so I want you to see this. What I do, see, I go like that. Now see how I'm doing this? I'm coming right up to the edge and I'm barely letting it dance right there on the corner. See, I'm staying away, just barely letting it touch that edge. Now, guess what I'm going to be able to show you now? Look, I can't go in there. I mean, I can feel it big time. It's like about a 30 thousandths drop-off ridge right there. I can't go in there and chop on that meat enough to do it. Now, if we could go to a 205 valve and come on out just a little bit bigger uh, this way, Okay, I might could take a, a metal cutting carbide and dance just a little bit more, man. This is scary, but I might could help straighten it out. But with the 202, he's just going to have out there. I really can't dress too much of that out. But anyway, let me show you another area you can tell. Hey, look at this line 
right here you see that line that's the debit I was talking about it actually drops off a little bit now um, the guy that owned the heads didn't do that right there uh, this is a factory cut you can tell it's a debit and if they just would have gave us a little more meat right here and come off look at that you can see that gap I think I can you can see it I'm coming at about a 10 degree angle in look at that gap there just needs to be some aluminum right there or go bigger on the valve if we had a little more seat we could have went to a 205 or a 208 valve and come on out then I could have took some of the seat and let it roll right into the off aluminum this is going to be a dead spot or a devit where air will come out and it will vortice right here so that right there would be in a comparison to a Brodex uh, to the pro comp head in the three-way test this would be an area right here that they had the disadvantage where the Brodex had a little bit more meat filled up this right here would be a big minus for the pro comp head right here all right hey I just thought I'd show you when I switch to the small egg remember that the big egg has done everything it's here this kind of blends it all together I'll show you how I do it you're just lightly dancing it now this is the hard corner here to get around. Remember what I told you about this little ledge that's right here? I'm going to start. And blend that ledge into the coexisting wall that was there. And then go down. over here and start pulling on the floor because see it's leaving a little bit of a shoulder as I dig up and down so then I got to come over here and go side to side and lightly let it dance there's a big hump right there so you got to ease off of the gas a little bit and kind of let it float and blend in with it Gonna pull, take where I stopped right there, pull it right on around. Now, as you can see, she's really layered in pretty good. Of course, you always take your finger and feel. You shouldn't feel any humps or bumps, which I don't. Let me show you what it looks like on a port over here where it's done. Be where I broke through. That right there was that great big old what I have nicknamed or called the pillar of power or non-power. Pillar of power. Remember that? Now there's just a big gaping hole where that head bolt hole goes through. And um, here shortly I'll put the tube in it, but now let's get a straight shot. Wow, look at that. Isn't that just a bomb? A beautiful shape. Little bit of fillet radius right in here. Really straight wall. Pitches right in and goes right to that valve seat with a little bit of a radius where it's starting to form the circle because that's what you want to do. You don't want it flat like this because as it changes from a rectangle right around here, it's got to change into a circle and that's prepping it. That's kind of winding her up, getting it ready to make that 90 degree bend, drop down there at the valve and start to form its circle. All right. I thought you'd, you'd like that. That's pretty cool, but that's what it looks like. Then the finger, uh, as, as I call it, 
We'll go in here and uh, really blend it real good to form the corners, get to the lines, get all this, go up about an inch, and then it's done. It's ready for the tubes. All right, just wanted to give you a heads up on how I use the small egg.